Is it possible to grow vegetables and other plants that take care of themselves, that produce food for us rather than the insects, and that we don't have to keep pampering with lots of fertilizers and other expensive inputs? Yes, it is, but there are two crucial things that we need to do. Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Seabrook from Learning From Nature. The first thing we need to do is to get a better understanding of our growing conditions. So these are the things that are going to affect how well our plant grows. Go into your shed and grab a spade and go and have a dig around your garden. And have a look at how the soil changes. What does it look like in different parts of your land? Also have a look at the patterns of sun and shade. You know, where have you got shade? Say for example, particularly in the afternoons when the sun is hotter. Have you got frost hollows? Where are the areas where it's, it's really windy or where the dra drainage is poor? Why do we do this? Because if you go into any or look at any natural bushland or natural vegetation, you'll see that the plants grow in the conditions that best suit them. So look here at how the vegetation changes according to the slope of the land or how different vegetation is growing according to how much drainage there is in this huge wetland. You would have seen these patterns and even when we look closely we can see that the changes can be really small. So for example how moss prefers growing on the shady side of a tree and how seemingly insignificant changes in the soil influence what plants grow. Look at the different weeds in this abandoned field. These patterns occur because every plant has its, its niche. In a way, it's the conditions where it prefers to, to grow. We have niches too. Look at this young woman. She has obviously found her niche, her dream job where she is thriving, able to use her talents and expertise. By better understanding our growing conditions and how they vary across our land, we give our plants the opportunity to use their talents and expertise as well. If you want a hand with mapping your growing conditions, we've created a very simple and quick technique. And you click the link above to get more information, or there's also information in the description below this video. All you need to do is set aside just probably a few hours on a Saturday morning, and, and you can get your kids involved too. Here's the grow map that we produced for this veggie garden. Which brings us to the second thing that we need to do, choosing plants that will grow well in our growing conditions. For instance, cabbage and lettuce and other leafy greens grow best in fertile, free draining soil and sunny positions, except if your garden like this one is in, is in the tropics and we have to grow those leafy greens in the shade during the summer. Bananas need protection from strong winds and most of our fruit trees prefer fungal dominated soil. So we choose the plants and plant them where we can provide these conditions. So it, it's, not, it's not hard to find out information about what sort of conditions your plants like to grow in. You know, when we're buying vegetable seeds, um, look at the descriptions in the catalogues, um, read, the, read the description on the back of the, of the packets. They usually tell you, you know, whether they need deep free draining soil, full sun, part shade. Um, and also when you go to the plant nursery, look at the, um, you know, what the label is saying there. Ask your neighbours, you know, what grows well in their gardens? And you might find that there's a local seed saving group in your area. I mean, they're a great source of information. And of course, you know, we've all, a lot of us have got access to the internet and there's lots and lots of information there. So don't give yourself an uphill battle trying to change the growing, your growing conditions to suit your plants. You know, unless there's something that you particularly want to grow. Um, choose plants that will grow well in your conditions. Growing plants that take care of themselves. We produce more in the good times. We experience fewer setbacks when the weather turns bad. We reduce our costs because we're not having to buy all those inputs to pamper those plants with all the time. And the other thing that happens is we start growing from our strengths. So we've mapped our growing conditions. We've looked at places where there's 
where the conditions are really good. We've looked at the areas and we've identified the areas where they're more challenging. For example, where it might be very windy. And so now that we, we know those growing conditions, we can use those plants or we can use plants to actually improve those growing conditions. For example, we know plants are really important for improving our soil. So by growing plants that can look after themselves, that can take care of themselves and grow strong and healthy, then we can better use them to improve our soil conditions. And if you want to find out more how to do that, um, just check out this link in, for the next video.